In this screencast, I'll show you how to go from a raw data set to a free website hosted on GitHub. We will do an exploratory data analysis, create functions to clean up our raw data, and make a plot that compares the rate of scoring hockey goals over time. Follow along and watch me do this in real time. So I'm going to create a new Tidy Tuesday project. And by doing that, I run the script create Tidy Tuesday in the description will be, let's go to my thing here. Today, I am going to be using hockey goals. Hockey goals. Uh, so let's do, uh, let's just call it hockey goals. Hockey goals. And while this is running, I want to explain briefly what this script is doing. So let's jump over here to the um, VS Code. So I have a bash script here. This is the create Tidy Tuesday project thing that I've, I've created here. And what it does is it looks in the parent directory and it says, what is the largest number I see so far? And it was two and it just created three. So it increments to one more than that. Um, creates a new directory for that. It explains it in the, it prints it out to the screen as well. Um, it, is, it then creates a bunch of uh, directory structures that I would like to use for the same project. And uh, then it starts to actually do more clever things here. So it asks for the project description. And then it initializes a GitHub repo using the command line utility GH from GitHub. And it creates a new project uh, that's publicly available with the description that I just gave it. Clones the repo here and goes in when then it actually moves my um, moves into the repo, runs nbdev new in that uh, in that um, thing, installs nbdev hooks, does a commit and a push to GitHub. And then at the end, it, it prints out a bunch of things here, including saying like your new repository has been created. Um, please wait for the actions to complete, which I just did. And then click this link here. So uh, at the end here, there's this link. And in iTerm, if you hold down command, you can then turn your cursor into this little finger clicker rather than a text selector. And if you click on that, it will send you to the link that you just saw here, which is 32 Tuesday 003 and the settings pages piece here, where from here we'd like to say, we're going to change the branch to be GitHub pages and save. Okay, so we go back to code, the code piece here, change the about one to be, I'm going to remove this here and to see if this use the GitHub pages. Okay, it should be the same. And so basically running this one bash script so far has actually already given us a, a tidy Tuesday repo created two minutes ago. And it has a bunch of things already set up, ready to go, including a creating how to create a pip library based on this description, uh, based on this um, analysis. And once the actions have completed, let's see here, it looks like they've all completed. I should be able to click this and this is a live website. So with basically a single line of code or one, one hit, hitting enter and giving the description here on my, um, my terminal, I have an entire um, GitHub repo sitting and ready for me to start work. Okay, so let's go, let's get to it. And let's take this link because I would like to use this and take a look at what, what data we're gonna be looking at today. And while we're doing this, I should also create a new uh, thing over here. I'm gonna go into 003 and then say Jupyter Lab. I'm gonna use Safari for my browser uh, for this. While that's loading up, I'll also create another one here where I will do the NB dev, let's see, Mava activate DS. Go into the repo. And I would like to do the NB dev preview. I'm gonna 
preview. So there's a couple of different web servers that have now been started. There's been there's the Jupyter Lab repo. It's up here. There is, which is located in, actually in Safari here, and there is a localhost thing running here on my Tidy Tuesday 003 thing, which is a local version of the the documents the the, the docs for this repo. Okay, so those two things are just gonna be running in the background, no problem. Let's actually get started here. So this is a useful piece at the end. So let's call this a cleanup notebook. This stuff is all um, example stuff from MBDev. I don't need it quite yet. I'm going to do a few things here. So I need imports, I need data. I'll do um, EDA, let's call it. Let's do plots that are interesting. So these are the main sections I'd like to do. And then I'd like to make these sections. So I'm going to highlight all of them by doing option, click and drag. Doing two hashtags up front. And then I'm going to separate this into, uh, actually, I'd like to first create this to be a markdown. And then I'll set them into four separate um, sections here. And now you can see that there, I have um, this as my um, kind of like a table of contents here, hockey goals. This, uh, I'll actually do this in the other one in the index. Tidy Tuesday 3 I'll call this hockey goals from this data set. Okay, so now it's <laughs> when I hit command S, Safari is wanting to figure out how I want to save this as a, okay, have you ever seen this? This is basically a problem, um, like something's gone wrong, where it's Safari is trying to save it. It's it's not relinquishing control to the um, to the notebook here. So so some it's might it might be interfering with some of my um, keyboard shortcuts here. We'll have to figure out what's going to happen there. Actually, one thing I will do, I've saved both of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill Safari real quick. And restart it. So in the back end, Jupyter Lab is running still. It has this. Um, it's up in the upper right hand thing here. It, it has a kernel that's running, a server that's running, and all I did was um, restart Safari. So this shouldn't have done anything to the running state. Like it should still have everything be um, right there. Let's see if I can scroll real quick to the. Now it's going to be the local host, right? Triple eight or quadruple eight, I mean. Yep, so you can see that these are still here. Let's see if I do Command S, that works. Command S, that works. Okay. So, anyway, if you get yourself in a state where your keyboard shortcuts are doing weird things to the browser instead of things to the notebook that you wanted, you maybe just have to restart the browser, which doesn't mean you've lost the kernel, you haven't lost any state necessarily, um, as long as you saved everything. Um, you should just be able to restart that without any issues. Okay, so let's grab the data. And... Don't need that one. And this is the... This is the core one, so I'll pin this tab. There are one, two, three... data sets here. I'll just copy the whole thing. This week's data visualization article come from the Washington Post. Let's see if that loads for me. Alex broke a 700 career goals mark. Second fastest all time. Eight to 700 goals. Can you keep up the pace? Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time looking at this, but um, 
Okay, I've got a sense of it, I think. All right, let's pull the let's pull the data into this uh, spot here. B for a new cell below. A bunch of R code that's not going to be helpful in my Jupyter notebook. Um, I have a keyboard. I have a snippets shortcut within my Alfred thing that allows me to do uh, just have some standard imports that I always like to do at the, at the front uh, that I can just load. It loads in things like pandas and, and matplotlib and things like that. And that looks like it loaded correctly. I will have these things be my pandas data frames. Um, and I'll call them raw because I suspect I'm going to have something to do with them. And I need to do pandas to read this. And pandas should just read CSV in the same way. None of this is useful. And um, I like to use the keyboard shortcut for black tidy for like black Python formatting. So black is the Python Python formatter that I use here. Okay, let's see if that just if that just works. First look, game goals raw. That took a little while. Player, rank, game number, rank. I'll take a look at that um, data dictionary for a second. Team, at, opposition, uh, location, outcome, goals, assists, points. So we'll probably be using these guys. Goals, points, assists, plus, minus. My initial guess is that is a, an error on the thing. So plus minus uh, two goals, plus or minus one. Uh, that's clearly not true, but it is a funny thing to think. Um, so this player, Alex, I think who we're looking at, the whole reason for this, yes. Um, this rank doesn't seem correct to me. Uh, goals. All right, so just as a first look, it looks like the data loaded correctly. Um, I suspect we'll have some cleanup to do here. I'll have to take a second look at what this rank thing looks, but for now, let's just look at the other two. Um, things here we have. Total goals, raw rank. I'm guessing this is going to be a total size of um, year start. Okay. Okay, 251 rows. Yep, okay, not too bad here. Let's look at the first 20. Okay, it looks like it's it is just descending rank with the total number of goals. Some URL number stuff, whether they're active or retired, the year they started in. This looks the years they played, although it's in a format that says from 79 to 99, so it's a 1999 kind of a thing. Nan on the raw rank, um, 16, mm, so this is 17, unless there's a tie. Okay, looks like it looks like there's a tie, and the tie means that you put a Nan there, so I'll probably do a forward fill. Let me just add a little note to myself here. Um, raw top to clean. Probably some sort of forward fill. Raw rank. Is there a different thing besides raw rank? No. Okay, so this will take a D this will take a raw function and return raw something or other right now. Okay. So this is the kind of I like to have the the data cleaning let's call this uh, the raw piece. And then have the cleaned piece here separately. So that uh, if we look here at the structure here, we have the data part, which is raw and cleaned. And this will, it's good to have all the different things you have to do. Let's say like, you know, five plots in, I realize some other thing is wrong with the, with the data set, then useful to have this 
uh, have one place at the top where all the cleaning steps happen. Okay, so it glanced at the raw head one, and this one should be moved down. Let's just do a dot head, and then what is the third one? So it's top game and season goals. Season goals. Ah, this is going to be the season that he played and what the... This might be... I have to look up what these things are. But again, it does look like the... Um, basically, the raw data was read in correctly. All right. So, how do we want to go from here? And close this off. Actually, I want to take one last look at the dictionary here before I start doing a. I'll use the Y the Y the Y data uh, profiling library to do a an initial EDA thing because it's a very quick way to just kind of look at all of these things um, to see if there's anything specifically weird about it. So there's a raw rank, blank of duplicate. Okay, so this is where the NAN came in. Rank of goals. Player years active is a string, I guess. Total goals, URL number. Game goals, goals for each player and each game. Only for players who started at or after the 1979 season. Goals for each player and each game. Okay. Season rank game number. Game number within each season. I wonder why what this means if they're not the same with each other. Game number and rank. Actually, I want to see if I can do this little rank here. And game number. What's going on here? Why are they the same? Age in year days. Year days. I will have to double check what that means. The team, whether it's home or away, the opponent, the location, the outcome. Goals scored by the player, which is what we're going to be looking at. The assists, the points is the sum of goals and assists. Okay, so these two added together as points. Here we go, plus minus. What does plus minus mean? Plus minus. The team points minus opponent's points scored while on the ice. Okay. Penalty minutes. Goals while even strength, goals, goals while on power play, goals while shorthanded. When the goal was a game winner. Assists for the same situations and number of shots, shot percentages. Okay. And finally, the season goals. All right, let's look at this one. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so I think let's look at the top. We have top 250. Let's look at the data first. Let's do some EDA. So what are the three things again? Game top season. Game top season. Let's see here. Let's do this a different way. No. 
Actually, I want to make these things stop using raw pretty much right away. So I actually want to start with this uh, cleaned thing where right now it just returns raw. So um, yeah, let me grab those real quick from here. And so I've done some kind of annoying things here with this. Uh, these things take the... Take that away. Um, top to clean. Game to clean. I'll remove this note to myself. And finally, season to clean. So all of these things right now simply are returning the the cleaned dictionary or the cleaned uh, is going to be called after it goes through these different ones. Game to clean and season to clean. Let's keep these things in the same order. How do I how did I load it in? Raw top season, a game top season. Game top season. Okay, so now this should work. Of course it doesn't. Let's see what's next. Oh, I don't have a config file. Let's see here. Um, Okay, so that worked. I'll need to write a note to myself to make this. Um... Okay, so just to explain what I just did there, um, the profile report, which is a piece of the, um, the from this Y data profiling thing, this profile report here, requires at least at the time of this recording, it requires the config file to be specified, and I just take the standard, like whatever they have that came with it, the config minimal uh, YAML file with no edits, no changes at all. Um, I, I just copy that into my local directory, but I would like to change this. So I'm going to make a note to myself that this needs to happen. Um, I'll put it maybe over here. To do's. Okay, so now I have a note in my main folder here, which explains why need to do that. So EDA, what does this look like? I should actually probably call these things profiles. Um, so game profile, what do we got? Well, I was thinking I'll do the rest of them. Like when I'm so much faster than the computer that I can actually like write multiple things and queue them up. Here we go. Generating the report structure. Go ahead. What is the answer? Okay, I can still think while this is doing some questions. Oh. 
So here's the report. This can be saved out separately from the notebook. It doesn't have to be in the notebook itself, but I find it helpful just to look at to begin with. Uh, briefly looked at them anyway. Number of variables is 25. Observations is a lot. 10% missing. Oh, actually, I'll do the missing number thing as well. Um, I'll have that as a thing to do later. All right, so I had a little bit of a power outage. That was kind of exciting. Uh, but I think I've actually restored everything to pretty much how it was before. So let's get back to it. I've got my repo still here. And the hockey goals here. And my Firefox over here. Okay. So just to give a brief recap of where I am. Um, I have the imports. I've got the data here. Raw and cleaned, which right now just is basically returning raw right now. Nothing has been edited yet. Uh, and then all of them are named without the underscore raw at the end of them. The EDA here is currently the profile from profile report from Why Data Profiling. And just going through them real quick. So the game profile with 25 variables, um, you can select which columns you want to look at. I think we saw here that nothing super surprising here. The dates aren't useful as a word cloud. Um, the ages look a little bit funny, but this is because it has the year day distinction that we saw previously. Uh, a lot of word clouds, which basically don't tell us much. And a few things like the, um, the plus minus metric, which I was just thinking out loud about what I thought, like, why is this not symmetric and why I think it makes sense that it's not symmetric about zero. Uh, the penalty minutes, goals, even, power play, short goals, game winner stuff. Okay, so we can maybe dive into that a little bit deeper. Now let's look at the, the profile for the top one. We have raw ranks, which goes from, I guess, one to 250, top 250. Player names, the years, uh, total number of goals. Okay. Uh, URL numbers, raw links, and links. Okay, so this isn't anything really that special to look at. Then we have the season profile. Let's see if there's anything here that we should take special look at. Rank, position. <laughs> okay, so um, four distinct positions. So, okay. I guess goalie is probably not in the top uh, thing, but maybe, maybe, maybe it'd have goalie. Are they right or left handed? Actually, it looks like left is dominant here, which is kind of an interesting thing. Player, the years, total goals, status, uh, year, start, oh, start year. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And their ages. Okay, so this is a pretty cool histogram already of the ages that are being played here. Which is which league they're playing in season games. Goals. Points plus minus. Goals, even power play, and so on. Headshot. Cool. Alright, so we have We've done some initial glancing at the data. We've seen some stuff that we probably need to clean up. Uh, I'm not going to prioritize that right now. Just got a few more minutes to make a couple plots and we'll go from there. So we can, we can collapse these. We can collapse these actually all the way down. I don't need to see these as I scroll around and capture my, um, capture my cursor. So what are some what are some plots here that are interesting? So we have the top scores of all time. We have the um, the data for these things. Is uh, This is the top 250 goal scores. The goals for each player and each game. And then this is... The... Um, goals per season. Let's just double check that, that understanding makes sense. Um, how many ro rows are in the game goals versus the 
season goals. So let me just do one last um, check here. Season goals. Okay, there's 4,000 of those. Um, game goals. And we see here that Gretzky, that's a famous name, obviously, raw rank number one, Gretzky. Ten times as much data in the game goals. In the top 250 we already saw was like 251 lines long. Cool. So let's see if we can do something like, as a function of season, let's maybe start with the most aggregate level and go forward from that. Can we see how Wayne, or the top N um, people, um, added their goals and, and added the total goals up to get the total number of goals in this top 250? Actually, let's just do that as a sanity check real quick. So season goals top 250. So let's, let's actually just add, um, this is part of the EDA. Season goals of where season goals player is uh, equal, equal to Wayne. Oh, this is going to be embarrassing. Gretz. How do you spell Wayne Gretzky? I just saw it. Gretzky. Oh, got it. Gretzky. Um, let's just make sure I got that. Okay. And what we want to do is say goals.sum. Ooh, a thousand goals does, does not agree, agree with the total number of goals of being 894. We already have a contradiction. Let's see how off uh, Jaromir is, or Jaromir, I don't know how to say this guy's name, sorry if to any hockey fans and to Jaromir himself, if I got it wrong. Let's... 830 goals. So I actually have two web servers now running. One of them is running Jupyter, and one of them is running the NB Dev preview of the documentation for my library. So let's see what that looks like real quick. This is, as you can see here, localhost 3976, and the current state of what you see my uh, repo to look like. And then if I go over to Safari, I have a Jupyter lab instance running, also on localhost with a different port number there. So let's go back to my, my notebook here. And I just started this up, so none of this is gonna be loaded in memory, so I will reload these things into memory. Oh, and there's a, a thing I wanted to try here real quick, which was this uh, two widgets piece. We'll see if that works. Okay, so the raw data looks like it's been read in, no problem, great. The shape, oh, this can't work yet because it hasn't run through the cleaned one. So I'm gonna select all of these. Um, with the shift and down arrow, and then I'm gonna do a control shift down arrow to move all of them lower. So just that whole group of cells just went lower. Um, I will now do this raw to clean across the three different data sets that we have there. And now this will work again. So what does one of the shapes? Game profile is not yet found. I need to put this below the EDA. Now let's see. So this is my first time trying the two witnesses. Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, I guess it's not working. I will stay in um, 
this mode. All right, so the two widgets thing has worked, it looks like, on the game profile, this profile report. And so what it's done is it's looked at this game and it says there's a different, a bunch of different variables here. You can click on the variables. Oh, it looks like that doesn't work. Player, rank, location. Oh, just goals. Because that doesn't seem like it's really worked. There's a lot of um, things here. And this is just like alerts, things you should be like obvious things that should be worried about. There's like goals even has 76% zeros. And I don't think that's a problem. I think that's probably uh, normal and actually correct for them to be quite a significant number of zeros. And um, so anyway, this looks like it didn't quite work. So the standard way to do it is to just do the prof the the variable itself directly into the, the notebook. You can also save this as an HTML file. I might do that later. This two widgets thing is, has been disappointing. So let's just remove that. So we've looked at the game profile, we looked at the top profile, and we looked at the season profile. I'm going to load them in so that they're in the notebook. And um, the nice thing about this is uh, when it's pushed out, you can scroll through all the different um, kind of e initial look at the data, EDA type stuff. Um, it's just set in there for free and it works fine with the note with the um, it works fine with the website that's been running. So if I look at this local one here, um, once I do this EDA, I have the same thing here and I can zoom out a little bit and see this. So this whole report is actually embedded into the HTML file that will be pushed into the GitHub um, repo once I push it to it. So let's go back to this. We've already done this part. So let's skip ahead to something that's kind of interesting and I will actually minimize this. Um, in two ways, I'll actually do that little bar session so that it's minimized and now we don't have to go through it. Although this is actually annoying to me already. Um, cannot pack non-iterable report. Okay, well, this at least gets rid of that, this kind of thing here. I wonder why that didn't work this way. I guess it's just the second time you run it, it's fine. A mystery to be uh, solved some other day. For now, we'll keep it to this. Oh yes, so that we, where we left things was that um, if you look at the season goals for Wayne Gretzky over time, um, it differed from what you would see if you if you looked at the um, the sum of the game uh, the top profiles. So let's do that real quick. I want to do a plot of this, actually. I'll do the sum of the games compare with the actuals. So this is my question. And so let's take this down here. We'll call this player name equals Wayne Gretzky, where player equals player name. And we also would like to look at top 250. And in this case, we would like to see where the player is also equal to player name. Top 250. Top 
add some. Uh, just let's just see what happens here. Yeah, so it's called total goals in this one. So uh, sum of goals is equal to the sum and top goals is equal to this thing dot value. Okay, so it's value 894. And so what this should give us is something like, um, let's actually just do a for loop first. I'm just curious to see what for player name in top 250 and, uh, iloc. Hmm. what I wanted to do for row in so this is player name in this thing now we want to merge these two things together and just print this out so look at the first one ah, that's okay to keep this in there I'll just so for player name in the first n players, and there are indeed one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna print the player name. Let's do it this way. So the first five is the top 10. So it looks like this, the top 10, we've got some differences here between what was summed in the seasons versus what was actually recorded in the thing. And what, what that difference is, I want to just actually maybe print just the difference directly. And I want these things to be lined up and I don't want to spend too much time on it. See, some goals looks like they're higher. Um, okay, so the difference is 115, 174, 64, 32, 28, 35, negative 2, 0, 0. Okay, so the differences here are kind of all over the map, but they're not small differences. I mean, like, Top 700 goals is like the best you can do. Uh, I mean, this, top 700 goals get, apparently gets you the top eight people of all time. So 100, being off by 100 and 115 is, is pretty big. Of course, the one that the website was about was this Alex uh, guy who's, who has no difference between the two of them. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting, actually. How should we how should we plot this? Um, so 
So when you're doing something like this, I like to, to plot the, um, the thing that matters here is the difference in number of goals. So that's 115. And I'll just actually just say like, um, warning maybe. Uh, might have problems. Some of the games, some of the goals in the seasons don't match the top data set. And some of them do match. So if they were all, if they were all off by some huge number, then maybe I would have thought that maybe they're doing points versus goals because there's a difference in the definition there. But because some of them are zero, I suspect something different has gone on. Maybe it's just the first season or something like earlier on in the in the um, data set. It doesn't get there. Okay, so let's do something. Let's let's do a, a data anal a data tweak here. Where um, if I remember right, we have a situation where the, there's a age and the age is in terms of a year day so let's uh, the age yes so let's let's do this in years and make this just years make this a decimal like we don't need this to be let's just make this a decimal and the way i'm going to do this is say that every year is 365.25 days multiply that by the years um, add in the number of days on the right hand side here then convert that back into years by just dividing by 365.25. And then I'll have for every game and every player, their age in years to whatever decimal places they have, rather than this weird year thing. So now I should be able to, I would be able to plot like a group by the players, you know, on the age on the X axis and the Y axis be like the number of the, the cumulative sum of the goals they've played so far, something like that. So to do that, we'll have to do some tweaking here. And this will, this will go up into the cleaning stage here. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do some test runs here, though. Um, game goals .head, just to refresh my memory. And oh, since this is actually a pretty beefy thing, I'll do I'll call it a thing called temporary where I do game goals .head, and I'll just grab like the first 200. Actually, what I'll do is I will sample from this. Sample, is it resample? Resample. So I'll resample 200 of them. And that way, I'm not, if the first 200 are Alex, I'm not going to just get 200 of exactly Alex if there's some problem there. Invalid frequency. Well, give me the, give me the tooltip here. What's going on? What is going on? Oh, it was doing some weird thinking thing. Can I just say sample? Okay, I did. I could just do sample. I need to do resample. Okay, let's look at what we have here. Okay, so now we have some random selection of people, uh, which have some ages here, and they're not all the same person, and they're just kind of sampled randomly here. Okay, so we'll use this lightweight one. This is 200 rows instead of 49,000 rows, just to help us um, visualize what's happening here. So let's start by. Um, let's do a dot head at the end of this. Taking the thing and saying uh, dot assign years old is equal to um, age. OK, 
Okay, so that first part works. Oh, what am I doing? Next, we need to uh, take another piece of this puzzle, which I'm just going to do this in a couple of steps. This is, if you already know exactly what needs to happen, this is um, not the right way to do this, but uh, days old equals temp age dot string dot split. Uh, let's do it like this. STR of zero. Let's we'll see what this does. And okay, I've actually grabbed the years. Uh, so this is obviously not right. So years old is age dot string dot split zero. And days old is split one. Let's just see what that looks like. And just to keep myself happy, I will do a thing where I'm going to take the player, the age, and then years old, days old. So the age was 23, 21, 23, 33, and days old is now this one. Cool. All right, so we have the string here, and I can do this. I'm going to cast this as type float. No, it doesn't like this at all. That looks like it works. And uh, days in year equals 365.25. Let's multiply this by days in a year, and this is uh, days old, kinda. Mm, let's, let's call this days old one, just to start here. So this didn't like it. Let's see if it was simply a matter of parentheses. Did I screw up something? Nope. What did it, didn't like? Years old is not. Oh, yeah, of course. Day old one is it's no longer years old. It's now this. So 23, 21, 23, 33. These are how, days, how many days you old are you are based off of the years you are. So now what we need to do. So we'll probably need to create this as a also as a float. Make sure that works, okay. And we'll say, um, we want to add these two, essentially. All right, so it's really this first one, which is how many years old you are in um, let's just do this. Hard to talk and speak at the same time. So this adds and let's just double check that I did this right. 23 times uh, days in a year is 84,000 plus 200 is 86,075. Okay, so this looks like it's doing the right thing. And I don't actually want days old. What I want is years old. So I'll call it years old. And then I'll take this whole thing and divide by days in a year. And we don't have this thing anymore because it's called this years old. What has gone wrong? My first guess is the parentheses have been mismatched. Let's just do one last thing around the whole sign. I can't. Oh, there's actually an error it says on this. I 
that was never closed. Let's go back to a state where we knew where things were working. Days old. As type float. This one. It actually worked when I did when I added them, right? Plus. Copy this. Okay. So again, this is working. Let's clean this up at this stage. So I just use the black formatter, uh, Python black formatter, to clean this up. That's a, a keyboard shortcut I have listed in here. Okay, so now we need to think about this. This went this went horribly wrong last time. We want this to be years old. All we really need is this entire thing, which already exists. We need this already thing, which already exists. Again, that works. I want to wrap this whole thing in parentheses. I'll do a second parenthesis just to get paranoid, divided by days in a year. Now this is, this should work. Okay, I thought that was basically what I had done previously. Somehow I must have messed up some parentheses somewhere. Okay, so at this point, what I have is a new uh, column that is how old is are these people to the day uh, in, in years. Or fractions of a year. Cool. Now I want to put this back into the cleanup function. So here's a dot assign. And that goes from here to here. And this is I'm cleaning up the what am I cleaning up? Game goals. Game to clean. Raw dot assign years old looks like this. This maybe could be cleaned up a little bit better than it is right now, but for now, I think it's it's clear to me at least how it uh, was created. And I want to put this at the top. We have what do we have here? We have raw cleaned EDA and whatnot. Let's put this under imports and above this thing. Um, constants days in a year. Actually, I guess I can make that all caps then. And this, well, let me merge these things, uh, close this out, and let's just do a standard thing where you kind of say, we start and run all. And this lets you just make sure you haven't screwed up anything in particular. It's a good time to just take a step away from the keyboard and figure out what's going on. So we've got a problem here. Temp is not defined. Aha. Uh -huh.
see the things we catch when we do a restart and run all. Completely correct. Temp should not have been defined and should not be in that function. Game goals raw. Cleaned up. Game goals head. Here's old is 20 and incrementing ever so slightly. Okay, great. I think that looks good. I'm going to delete my intermediate work here. Okay, I guess this is still thinking about a few of these profiles. Top N is not defined. This is also intermediate work. I actually don't need this at all. I'm going to merge these things and I'm going to just delete these. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is plot the cumulative number of goals as a function of, uh, for a given player. So I'm going to do a player at a time first, and then I'm going to uh, against the years old on the on the x-axis. So let's do that with this. And I'll have to think about what needs to happen here. So I need to say the player got the game goals where game goals player player name. So I'm going to subselect out this way for now. Uh, I'll, I'll refactor this as I go forward. But uh, for now, I'll do the same kind of thing here is the player name. And in this case, I'm going to set the player name to be this. That's uh, too much. It's not, I guess it's not horrendous. Okay, so this is the data frame I'd like to be using. And so I will call this uh, plot df equals this. I don't want the head at the end. Merge this with the thing below. And I will say plot df axis dot plot, plot df. On the x axis, I will do years underscore old and on the y-axis I will do simply goals but I'll do the cumulative sum and if this looks really wonky uh, there's a few things I would do to, to double check this but let's just see what happens here Thing was never closed. see a plot here. Do I really have to say plt.show backend inline? Well, why is it doing that? <laughs> this is you, this is a first for me. I'm going to double check what's happening here. Um, and I want to ask ChatGPT for this one.
And that's what I try to do. I try to just execute the plot. Well, I didn't think I needed to do this anymore. Let's try it with this then. Let's let's, let's force this. What happens if I don't do a show? Okay, so there we go. Label equals player name. And let's do let's do a legend outside of the thing here. We got Alex. And now let's actually do the same kind of thing we did, the same kind of trick before. Let's move this all the way to the top, because I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's with how um, Safari is working. Uh, I don't know here. This next line shouldn't have to be here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go back down to the plots. Maybe call this something else like um, top end players. And then for this, I can say, I want the same figure done for everything, but for player name in top end players, I want this thing to exist with the labels being set that way. But we also need the plot DF to be updated, right? Because that is actually defined by the player name. That's no longer used. That's no longer used. And what does that look like? OK, so there we go. We got Wayne Gretzky cranking up here pretty quick. Jordy Howe, and so on. This is too many. I want top, I'm gonna choose here. Let's do top eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's the top eight ones here. And the top eight ones actually only have five lines. This must be, because we don't have the game data, we have simply for the older, the older generation. Okay, let's actually do a few things here. Uh, I'm going to look at this side by side. So do the shift thing here, and um, as this runs, okay, it could be, should be good here. Axis dot set X label, age, years. Ooh. Y label is cumulative goals scored. Actually, just goals scored, I think is fine. Age versus that, and the who is who's who is there. And we can give this a title, which is maybe good to have both as the subheading here. Um, what do the goals, cumulative goals scored look like as a function of age or the top scorers? And let's get the title to be something similar to that. Total goals scored as a by age. Text is not callable. So we know we have to say set to title. Okay. 
So I think with that, we're in a good spot here to stop our first pass, just because we now have some uh, some plots here to look at. And I want to do one last cleanup of this. So I, I've created a top eight number here, as well as um, this thing that returns the top top um, player names in that list. So I think I actually want to refactor this into a function and then use that later on. So to do that, I'm going to look up here and we have some, let's actually call this uh, functions and then there it's dedented here. So this cleans up everything, which is nice. Um, Um, when I say, what are the top, um, list of player names, I'll say list of top N player names. And it'll simply return this okay we don't need this we don't need this right now we also don't need this right now so we have some functions plotted here we've got the functions list of top player names i think i'll just do that some eda type things an initial analysis into when these things might have a problem. And that looks like it worked here. We don't need the this thing and we should do it here at the same thing. Top N equals Picked eight. Looks like it still worked. Okay, cool. Now I am going to move this. Say rerun, restart, and run all. Now this will take a minute because it's actually thinking through some some things here. And here I want to do nbdev prepare. And thank you, ChatGPT, for being helpful here. Let's just make sure we don't have any errors in the in the notebook as it's going. If you watch this, you can actually see how far it's how far along it is, where where there's code to run and when it's when it's up on the next one. So it's kind of fun. These next ones will take no time at all. Looks like it correctly used the function to do all those things, and uh, we will actually refactor this as we go forward. Wonderful. I will now close this out. Close and shut down the thing. Do the nbdev prepare. This also will take a minute. Let's take a look at what the what this thing looks like. So this should have plots here, and this looks nice. What did the cumulative goal score look like as a function of the age for the top scores? So you get to see that there's different slopes here, which is kind of interesting. And some people started slightly different ages, 18 versus 20. And um, yeah, so a lot of stuff could be fun here to look at. Success, okay, get pull. 
Get status. Get add. Read me. Every dev inside index. Get add NBS 00 core. Config minimal. Do I want that one? I will do this. I'll add this in here, but this is just know that I'm adding this under duress. Get status. Commit. Minus M. Complete first pass. Great. And this should simply push up everything to GitHub. And after I hit refresh here, after it runs the GitHub actions, this should all be updated and I'll be able to click core here and see quite a few things changed. But that'll take a second. So we have this website. We have plots here. We can click on and navigate to. And everything looks all nice here. Days in a year, dates, functions, I mean. Cool. Okay, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot. I had a lot of fun. Um, I'll be going doing more passes on this data set, so come back uh, for the next one.